It is Victory Monday here on the Larson Land Podcast. I'm your host, Sawyer Hill. I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Dylan Bradshaw. If you're new to the show, we come in here every single week and talk about all things involving the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series champion, Young Money, Kyle Larson. Dylan, what an awesome race this past weekend for Kyle Larson, leading 199 laps, so close to 200 laps led, and uh, swept all three stages, bringing home the huge win at the Homestead Miami Speedway. We talked about it last week. Um, we thought Kyle was going to have a chance going into, into this race. It's been a statistically very good track for him over the years, and finally he was able to pick up that win at Miami. Yeah, kind of a bittersweet moment, you know, after these past few weeks getting eliminated from playoffs. Kind of bittersweet because, cause, you know, we look at it like he he could be locked into the Final Four right now if he just a- advanced past that uh, round of eight. But, um, yeah, I mean, just, just absolutely dominated that race. Like you said, 199 laps, swept all three stages. No one really had anything for him in clean air. He was by far the fastest car. Um, you know, he was kissing the wall pretty much the whole time. That high side, most people ran, but... I don't think any other driver got as close to the wall as he did. Yeah, Kyle really ripped the top like no other in yesterday's race. And, I mean, I really think that, I mean, this is, in my opinion, I'm not trying to be biased or anything, but this seemed like it was one of the best races for me, in my opinion, for the next-gen car, just because it it seemed like you could actually get spread out. If you were fast and you could do something that other guys couldn't do in clean air, you could pull away. And we haven't seen that very much this season where, I mean, I think at some points during the race, Kyle Larson was, you know, 10 seconds ahead of second place. And like, I I really, I can't remember another race this season where we've been able to see somebody, if you're dominant, if you have a good car, if you are able to do something that nobody else could do, you're actually able to be rewarded for that. And Kyle was was really rewarded for that uh, yesterday. Um, he kind of talked about it in his press conference after the race. He said he, he, you know, we haven't really heard many drivers praise the next-gen car, but Kyle really was giving it a lot of praise in his post-race press conference, talking about how, you know, he probably would have won a couple of races before here at Homestead if – you know, if it was this current next gen car with that with that body on the car, the, the composite body, because we all know, that, you know, the body itself holds up a lot better on this next gen car. So, you know, in years past where Kyle would run that top side and be up against the fence when he would get into it a little bit. Um, you know, they'd have to pit, it'd be like a tire rub or something like that. This year he hit the wall maybe three or four times throughout the race, smacked it pretty good and just kept right on going. Yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, talking about the domination, I, I would probably say this is the the most dominating race all year. I mean, um, you know, top of my head, looking back, Chase Elliott at Atlanta, he swept all three stages. He led 96 laps. But I mean, Larson, I mean, led 199 laps, swept all three stages. We haven't seen really a driver dominate a race like this since last year in the, in the Gen 6. So um, and, and there was also like some passing. I mean, we saw in the final stage there. Larson, he got kind of kind of the bad end of the pit cycle when the when the yellow came out. Truex and Chastain ahead of him. He started third. He was kind of around like third to fifth position, but I mean, he was what three seconds back behind Truex at one point. He was leading, and I mean, he made his way back up there. So, um, you know, he he was running just such faster lap times than everyone. Even going back to qualifying, I think at one point he he was two tenths quicker than the field. So, I mean, just just such a fast car. Yeah, uh, yesterday at Homestead. So. Um, love to see it. Yeah, I, I kind of knew, like, in practice and quality. Practice, I think Kyle was, like, 15th on the board, um, went out in the second group. That was kind of weird. But then in the se- in the first round of qualifying, I knew it right when that car hit the track. I was like, all right, Kyle's going to have a good chance to win tomorrow on Sunday because, I mean, he went out there, like you said, and was it was was way faster in that first round. In the second round, it, I don't know if it was, you know, tires or, or what, what was the factor that kind of played into him, um, you know, qualifying fifth. I thought it was a sure pole for Kyle <laughs> after that first round. He looked like he was he was flying around there. But, um, yeah, this 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 race was was a, a really good one for Kyle. Like you said, um, you know, unfortunate, kind of bittersweet that he's not going to be going to Phoenix in two weeks, competing for a drivers' championship. But um, you know, still, you know, on the bright side of things, still in that owners' championship. And this win at Homestead did lock. Kyle and that number five team um, into the owners championship round of four at Phoenix. So really, I mean, when you look at it, I, 
that's where all the money is, Dylan. That's that's the money. It's not the the sexy championship like the drivers' championship. You know, NBC's not going to cover it that much, but you know, Kyle's going to go into there to Phoenix and he's going to have a shot at winning the money and winning that championship, the fifteenth owners' championship for Hendrick Motorsports. And I think that you know, Kyle talked about that a little bit also after the race in his post race press conference that winning that owners' championship means more to him than winning the driver's championship because that's that's for the guys that the guys that are in the shop that's for cliff daniels that's for you know jesse saunders the car chief on the on the five car you know the spotter it's for everybody the pit crew um the collective effort of the team i think that 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 really that really shows a lot of um you know fr- from kyle just just really you know putting the team putting the team first uh in front of himself because his name isn't going to be on that trophy it's going to be hendrick motorsports number five yeah, and it, it's a unique situation. I think you have the tweet. It, it's the first time since the 60s that um, we could have a different driver to win the owner's championship that doesn't win the driver championship. So um, definitely a unique scenario there. It's it's pretty cool. Like you said, Kyle talked about it in his post-race. He's he's definitely looking forward to it. He, he's going to try his hardest to win that owner's championship for everyone. So um, that's one thing to look forward to. Um, but, yeah, ho- ho- hope for the best uh, at Phoenix this year. Hopefully we can get a back-to-back owners. Yeah, and, and that tweet you were talking about, it's been, you know, in the Xfinity series and the truck series, it's been more of a commonality for drivers to be able to win or for teams to win an owner's championship but not win a driver's championship. And the last time this happened in the NASCAR Cup Series was 1963, Dylan. Joe Weatherly won the driver's title, driving for nine different teams. Um, and you know the Wood Brothers, Wood Brothers Racing won the owners' championship that year. Um, the only other time it happened was in 1954 when Lee Petty won the drivers' championship with two teams, and Herb Thomas won the owners' title. So definitely uh, some unprecedented stuff going on here. Obviously because of the the Kurt Busch incident, which has kind of brought this to be a possibility this year. I don't know if we'll. Hopefully, hopefully we'll never see this happen again, where it's it's a split championship. But um, it'd be pretty cool to see two different guys out there doing burnouts after the race <laughs> at, at Phoenix. <laughs> if if Kyle wins the race in the championship, and then somebody else wins the uh, wins the drivers' championship. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be pretty funny. Two cars doing burnouts, but uh, you know, getting back into Homestead, I, we're gonna go ahead and discuss this. You know, the drama of the race. We always have something kind of drama related with Larson seems like every race, but, um, you know, the Martin Shurek's junior drama, I think you have a clip of it. You can pull up. Yeah. I'll pull um, that clip up real quick here. Shurek, if you're watching on YouTube, lane, here it is. Um, is if you watch the race, the I mean, this, up, this was on the last the road, so sequence of the pit stops under, uh, under lap, yellow and, and up, I mean, Dylan, like, I mean, and, and to me, and I think what, you know, Kyle expressed after the race and, you know, it was pretty obvious that Truex slammed on the brakes, was going to miss his pit stall and um, just an unfortunate situation. But I don't think there's much Kyle could have done in this situation. Gibbs and their, their team were pretty, you know, fired up about it at the moment. But I don't I don't see where Kyle could have really done anything different here. Yeah, I mean, he clearly missed a stall by about two or three stalls too early. Um, they mentioned the post race Kyle, Kyle talked about the sun issue at, at, on pit road and you know all the debris on the windshield it's really hard to see so it, it's not too hard to you know be able to miss your spot for for pitting um but I mean as as far as the situation goes I, I really nothing happened I mean it wasn't intentional he can't he can't break on a on a pit road line he can't hold up an entire line otherwise it'll just cause a domino effect I mean if Larson braked and the guy behind him would have hit him and just domino on and on and on. But, um, you know, there's no brake lights on the car. The guys follow <laughs> that close. And, I mean, you, you got to pay attention in that scenario. So I don't think he did anything wrong. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, you're following behind somebody just inches behind them, maybe even, you know, touching them down that pit road and a guy slams in the brakes. There's, there's really nothing um, that, that Kyle could have done there. I kind of, I was getting nervous. Cause I was like, I was like, man, I was like, we've been the you know, Kyle Larson and the, the five team, they've been in the center of the drama for like the past two weeks. I was like, geez, here we go again. 
we're gonna have have another you know have another fist fight down on pit road after the race or uh somebody called there and intentionally wrecked kyle again but no we i think it you know in the moment it seemed like it was a big deal obviously sucked for truex because i think he was the only guy that may have been able to you know give kyle a, a shot for the win there i think it would have been tough for him on the restart to hold kyle off anyway but um he drove up through there fast still and i think he restarted like 18th or 19th and he drove up to f finish in the top five i think right yeah i think he finished fifth or sixth i believe he i, I saw him flying through there they were nbc was showing the camera view. i was like oh god we, we have another situation <laughs> Trex is gonna come up there he's gonna battle larson he's gonna dump him but uh they made it seem worse i mean it seemed like the crew was a lot more mad at the at the time but Truex did get out of the car i mean he did say it was partly his yeah. fault. yeah i i didn't understand that it, it was I don't see what Larson did wrong whatsoever. I mean, that was clearly on him, but I mean, at least he kind of somewhat took the blame. I don't really know about that, but um, yeah, I, I thought it was going to be blown out of proportion. I was going on Twitter. Everyone was, you know, fired up about it, like you said, because of the recent situation with Bubba. Larson's kind of in the circle of, of drama and controversy. So um, definitely got blown out of proportion, I'd say. Absolutely. So I, I like to kind of take a step back into, you know, let's, let's, let's back up to the start of stage three, because, you know, Kyle, obviously he won the race off pit road um, at the end of stage two, winning that stage and going into stage three, it was kind of, it kind of looked like, okay, Kyle's just going to have to, you know, run it, run a smooth race here. And he's probably going to be able to win this thing. But what, what kind of came to be about was, you know, there was the debate between whether teams are going to do a two-stop strategy in that third and final stage, or if they're going to split the stage in half and just do a one-stop strategy. I think that it, you know, became quickly apparent that everybody, or the majority of teams, were going to try and do the two-stop strategy, but... I got really worried, Dylan, because that that caution flag flew for Ryan Blaney spinning on the uh, you know the pit exit um, while Kyle Larson before he got to actually pit. So we ended up with that weird situation where we've got you know half the cars or the majority of the cars were a lap down and had to end up taking the wave around. But that's kind of how Truex and Chastain got to leapfrog the five car and take the lead, where Kyle had to come back come down pit road during the caution and uh fell back to third on that restart i i honestly thought that kyle was going to be able to pass them really easily just because of how fast his car was but in dirty air kyle kind of struggled on that short run there he kind of he fell back to i think fifth and i was like man it, like this is is this wing going to slip out of our hands here because i mean it did not look good but then as the run went on Kyle got back up to the top, got in his groove, and he really started to pull pull back ahead. I don't know if that that final caution didn't come out. I don't know if he would have been able to get Truex honestly because um, you know he was catching him, but catching him and then passing him while he was running that top side would be two different things, obviously. Yeah, and I, I saw. I think it was Byron. I mean, he was first to pit. He pit pretty early, so I was kind of expecting that Hendrick would be on a similar strategy there. I, I thought Kyle was going to pit within you know probably the lap after that, but he, he stayed out. Um, different pitch strategies there. I mean, Byron came in, and there was a few other cars that came in immediately after him. But I mean, at least we didn't get screwed too bad on that pit cycle. But with the way our luck's been going this year, I mean, it could have been way worse. Okay. So at least he came out third on the restart, and then obviously that that last one, um, he took the lead from Truex when he spun out first off pit road, and it was pretty much good from there. I mean, there at the end, Chastain and Almendinger, they were battling for second and third. They were kind of cutting the lead a little bit. I mean, I think they were getting you know, little, little lower than half a second close to Kyle. So, um, was, was kind of worried there that, that he was going to get caught in a battle with those two, but, you know, ultimately he got ahead, got about second lead over him and, you know, got that, got that victory, uh, at Homestead finally. Yeah, it was just just uh, a collectively a great team effort. I think even if, in my opinion, even if Truex, I don't, obviously we wouldn't know what his you know, time on that stop would be if he didn't spin out there on pit road. But I almost feel like that, that Kyle would have beat him off pit road anyway, because they, the, the pit crew was on it yesterday. Um, I think that last stop was like nine point, four or 9.5 seconds it was a money stop dylan and they hit it they hit it all all day and you know cliff really he he really hammered that home in the press conference after the race that you know it's kind of it's been it's been a year where 
it's been one thing or another that's held this team back from winning. He, he talked about the car. The car has been just as fast as anybody else all year, all the whole entire season, and they've really had the opportunity to do what they did last year, even in this next gen car. But it's been, you know, a mistake by the pit crew this week, or you know, a strategy call that Cliff made that held them back from winning, or you know, Kyle made a mistake this week, or or you know, it was just something crazy that happened, and like, it's. This week really felt like the team was back in 2021 form, in that championship form, because everything was hitting on all cylinders, you know, no mistakes across the board. It was just a flawless win um, for the team. And, you know, hats off to that pit crew, man, because they, they've had some some tough races this year, but this, this race they really came through on that final pit stop and really all the stops. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there was, what, two races in a row where the last pit stop, when it came down to it, it, it was a bad stop, and it, it, it kind of threw away the win for them. So, again, like you said, hats off to them. Um, I believe there's there's a few different guys that we had from last year. I think some different tire changes or something um, compared to the 2021 pit crew. But, you know, like you said, stepped up, fired in all cylinders, everything locked in, and just pure domination at Homestead. So we'll kind of go ahead and take a look at those owners' championship standings entering Martinsville this week. Like I said, Kyle Larson and the number five Hendrick Motorsports car locks themselves into Phoenix um, in the Final Four, and they will compete for an owners' championship there alongside Joey Logano, who won last week uh, at Las Vegas. So those two cars are locked into the owners' championship, but right now above the cut line, the track house number one ross chastain and the hendrick motorsports number nine of chase elliott with william byron and the 24 team sitting just six points below the cut line on the driver's side of things dylan it's going to be you know a, a a must win i think for guys like christopher bell or um for chase briscoe heading into martinsville here because they are they are a considerable amount of points out um and the owner's side and the driver's side so i think this week it's really going to come down to you on the driver's side of things it's going to be the the battle to watch is going to be denny hamlin versus um you know william byron for that fi- that fourth and final spot yeah and i mean going back to bell i mean he's been fast all year he, he's been in this position last round you know he, he had to win to get in at the roval he made it happen but um yeah like you said i i agree i think it's going to be hamlin and byron kind of battling for, for it at Martinsville here. Um, I, I thought Byron was was going to be one to, you know, be up front at Homestead. Um, you know, he was up front for a while, but I, I really thought he was going to be there at the end and the up front um, battling for the win. Didn't happen that way for him. But, um, yeah, I, I think my pick for Martinsville is going to be Byron, um, lock him in. Yeah, I mean, for Martinsville, like you said, I, I mean, it's hard to go against picking Byron or Chase Elliott because Byron obviously won the race in the spring there at Martinsville, and then Chase, um, he he won stages one and two. He kind of had the dominant car that, that day, if you remember. It was t- extremely hard to pass, probably one of the worst races this season. Hopefully it's a little bit better than that, but um, I think that this is going to be the, like, the most important qualifying session of the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series season, so I think the real the real race is going to be on Saturday, Dylan. It's not going to be on Sunday. Saturday, you know, at 12:30 or 12:45, whenever qualifying is, that's going to be important for these guys that are on the cut line because if you don't qualify good, you're not going to pass cars unless you know they have some issues or something goes wrong on pit road. You're going to have to keep it up front. You had to qualify up front and keep it up front all day. And um, you know, Kyle said in his interview after the race that. His goal for next week is a top five. Obviously, he doesn't have to win. There's no implications of him winning this race. Um, obviously, a win is would be great, but um, he's locked into Phoenix for the for the owners' championship. And um, you know, Martinsville not one of Kyle's best tracks statistically, but will be cool for him to go out there and get a clock um, heading into to Phoenix. Yeah, I, I mean that's pretty much been the story of the next gen this year. Not not a lot of passing, but. I mean, really on the short tracks, I would say that's probably the, you know, the the worst product of racing is on the short tracks this year. Um, you know, Richmond was pretty bad. Um, so Martinsville, it's pretty much going to go the same way, I think. Like you say, qualifying is going to be the biggest obstacle for these drivers to face. So, I mean, only time will tell, and, and hopefully we can get a back-to-back Larson win out the year. Um, you know, kind of kind of spit in everyone's faces, proving that he, he should be in the round of four, but, um, you know, Cards didn't really go his way, but hopefully everything will be back in action next year. Absolutely. So 
Uh, I think that pretty much wraps up all of the NASCAR stuff for Kyle Larson. There's really not any stuff going on on dirt for Kyle either. I think, um, you know, he's, I, I saw that Jacqueline Rumley, you know, tweeted to somebody that th they asked if he was going to be at Charlotte for world finals uh, in the late model. She said that she said no or not. It's not likely to happen but um somebody did have on facebook that kyle larson was testing the late model there at charlotte a couple like a week ago or so so i don't know maybe we'll see a surprise appearance in the late model there at charlotte i don't think we'll see him in the sprint car um there you know i don't think there's really much any chance of that as i think the car is probably back out in california but um you know would be nice to see Kyle back on dirt, but he's obviously competing for that owner's championship and that, that Charlotte stuff leads right into Phoenix. So I think Kyle's going to probably focus on that and, and head down to Phoenix and try and try and lock up that owner's championship for the five car. So, um, Dylan, unless you had anything else for today's show, I think that's pretty much all I had. No, I should pretty much wrap it up. But I, I wonder if, I uh, you know, remember last year, the championship, he took, he took that, you know, a lot of time off from racing. So I wonder if, you know, He's not with the driver's championship this year. I wonder if he'll just keep firing and, and not really take a break there. Just keep racing and racing and racing <laughs> following Phoenix. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But if, if you know, everybody knows the the place to, to look for all that information, it's right here on Larson Land. Um, all of our social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll post if we hear anything about Kyle racing anywhere. Obviously Millbridge is always a possibility in the micro as well. They're running Wednesday night, you know, wingless micros. So Kyle is always an opportunity to go there. I think they have a big micro show there at the beginning of next week. So after, after the Martin's Row race, I think it's Monday is prelims. And then Tuesday is like a, a, a like a big micro show there. So I wouldn't be surprised if Kyle runs that one beginning of the week stuff. Um, but We'll, we'll post about it if there's, if there's anything that, that comes about. So um, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in and listening to the show. Um, great win this week at Homestead for Kyle. Hopefully he can back it up with another win at, at Martinsville or and maybe even sweep the season. Win at Martinsville and win at Phoenix three in a row for Kyle. Maybe it'll happen, uh, but if not, I think this was a this was a good win to uh, you know wrap up the 2022 season and head into 2023 with some momentum. So we'll be back again next week to recap all of the racing from Martinsville and any other th racing that Kyle may participate in. Um, if you're listening on YouTube, please sub uh, like this video and subscribe. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please follow this podcast so you do not miss a thing. Have a great rest of the week, everyone, and enjoy the on-track action this weekend. We will see you in the next episode. Thank you.